थर्ड सेंचुरी बीसीई में एरिस्टोटल ने फीमेल बॉडी को डिस्क्राइब किया था एज द इनवर्स ऑफ द मेल बॉडी और द म्यूटिलेटेड इन्फीरियर डिफेक्टेड वर्जन ऑफ द मेल बॉडी एंड दिस बिलीफ हैज परसिस्टेड इन द वेस्टर्न मेडिकल कल्चर व्हिच हैज द हाईएस्ट इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन बिग फार्मा बट देयर वाज वन ऑर्गन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट बायोलॉजिकल एंड सोशल वैल्यू दैट वुमेन पोजेस्ड द यूट्रस but contradictorily it relegated women to the position of child bearers because patriarchy ne decide kiya ki ye aadmi ke low fidelity wale form mein uterus hai to uska primary purpose to reproduction hi hoga in some of the first sketches of skeletons male anatomy artists intentionally made women's hips look wider and their craniums look much smaller as a way of saying here is our evidence that women are reproductive bodies and that they need to stay at home and we can't risk making them infertile by making them too educated look how tiny their heads are of course not all women have uteruses and not all people who menstruate are women but medicine historically has always conflated biological sex with gender identity for a large part of history women were excluded from medical trials so we've ended up in a healthcare system that's been made by men for men Salo Tak researchers believe that incorporating female participants in research on medical conditions and pharmaceuticals would corrupt the data due to women's fluctuating hormonal cycle especially if they were pregnant un logo wo hindrance laga instead of something very important to be taken into account while creating drugs that would very obviously interact with these hormones a few jaw dropping examples would be in the early 60s scientists observed that women had lower rates of heart disease until they reached menopause so they conducted the first trial to test the supplemental hormone guess what the study enrolled more than 8000 men and no women not only have doctors scientists and researchers mostly been men but most of the cells animals and humans studied in medical science have also been male Most of the advances we have seen in medicine have come from the study of male biology. Irrespective of this, drugs are administered in gender neutral doses despite the obvious size, fat muscle and hormone ratio differences. For the most part of history, women's concerns were not taken seriously and were diagnosed by healthcare providers as female hysteria, a condition that assumed that a woman's symptoms were the result of her being weak or over dramatic. the cause of which was a wandering uterus or sexual frustration healthcare practitioners straight up gaslit these poor women into believing that they were manifesting these conditions because they were hormonal and none of it was real a prominent example of this is serena williams who found that her concerns about a pulmonary embolism following the birth of her daughter by c section were disregarded by the hospital staff It was ultimately her insistence that led the staff to find the blood clot and provide her the treatment she needed to survive. If women like her have to do zabardasti with doctors, think of what resourceless women have to go through. A very concerning gendered issue is the misdiagnosis of serious conditions. In case of heart attacks, women unlike men present with more associated symptoms like palpitations or nausea which aren't taken seriously enough. One new study from the University city of copenhagen found that women are diagnosed an average of 4 years later than men when it comes to more than 700 diseases and 2 and a half years later in the case of cancer physicians also prescribe less pain medication to women than to men with the same condition because of the hysteria narrative under representation is a huge cause of gender bias in medicine india has 43% of women as science graduates the highest number in the world but a mere 14% in science related related jobs gender inequity subtle discrimination sexual harassment unequal pay indifference workplace humiliation and isolation have kept women in india out of the job market that matches their science training the solution itself is a painful catch 22 exposing the regularity of gender discrimination and harassment relies on women telling their stories and being believed yet women are often unwilling to share these stories for fear of censorship or retaliation from a system that is structurally motivated to disbelieve them male employees are seen as bold assertive or confident when they challenge authority whereas women are disparaged as aggressive or rebellious or unprofessional even women have always failed to get their dues in science the most astounding is the revelation about einstein's wife mileva marich who despite being a classmate of einstein 
Einstein with an equal or even stronger disciplinary training in physics was not acknowledged for her influence and contribution to Einstein's achievement. Women don't have to be the other anymore. It's time to reimagine and rewrite our medical system because it's not men versus women. It's our past versus our future. This topic is a great example of how equality is not the answer but equity is. The architects of the world need to take into account the differences in bodies, minds and needs of all the genders because that's the only way we'll be able to equally cater to everyone's medical problems. Science shapes society and the need of the hour is a larger representation of women in STEM to break stereotypical frames of research and act as catalysts for change and progress.